Data engineering is kind of at an interesting place right now. I believe with the creation of the modern data stack, the role itself is actually evolving into something new. It's even spawned a new role that is kind of a subset of data engineering. To figure this out, I've talked to one of our own, a data engineer here at Airbyte, Alex Gronemeyer, to discuss this evolution and what she has seen firsthand. Before getting into the role, I wanted to talk to her about her journey and how she got into data engineering and what that looked like. I'm a computer science major, so I went to school for computer science. I started at General Mills right out of college. Um, and they have a rotation program. So you're able to do like multiple different roles within technology. Um, so I did an analyst role and then I did uh, a mobile application developer role. And then I was able to pick my third role. And, um, you know, we were just spinning up our Hadoop cluster at the time and data engineering, you know, sounded kind of interesting. And so um, that was how I ended up in the data engineering space was just a way to combine sort of my analyst and developer backgrounds and try something a little bit different. To preface all of this, Alex joined General Mills straight out of college, as she mentioned, and then also went to Fastly right after. Both of these companies treated data engineering very differently from her experience, and this is where I started to see the shift. Newer companies are starting to adopt what we call the modern data stack, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And with this, she saw her task change as new tools were added to her workflow. But first, before we get into what the modern data stack looked like, I wanted to get her day-to-day -day tasks that she had at General Mills. Kind of go over what your day-to-day -day looked like at General Mills, like, you know, after onboarding, kind of when you were uh, more situated at your role. Yeah, so at the time, um, we were moving all of our data from an Oracle database into Hadoop. And so a lot of my day-to-day -day was figuring out um, what data sources we had in our Oracle database and how to kind of like rework them into a Hadoop database with those technologies. And I was working really closely with other data engineers, analysts, business users to do all of like our testing of data and then with our kind of BI team to do report development as well. So I spent a lot of time in that area working with um, marketing data. And then I also had roles working with enterprise data. So learning about like SAP and, and that kind of source data system and then also sales data. So like different sales tools that we had and kind of how all of those connected together. And after this, we got a little into what her day-to-day -day looked like at Fastly as an analytics engineer, which you'll see is very different. So I started at Fastly in the middle of the pandemic. So okay. I believe that was like 2020. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then yeah. so like go over that transition, like from General Mills to Fastly. Fastly has more of like a startup-y kind of name or a more modern kind of name than like a General Mills does. So I'd imagine that transition looks very, very drastic potentially. Yeah, it was really different. So General Mills is like 10,000 person company. Fastly is like a thousand person company, much newer. It's only been around for the last 10 years. They're a public company. So it wasn't a startup, but still very much like fast paced, newer company culture. And that was my first experience with a more modern data stack. And so they're using an EL tool, they're using DBT for data transformations, and then using um, Looker. And my team was owning like that entire stack. So it was a really cool experience. It was um, felt a lot broader than kind of the data engineering work I had been doing before, but really different. I mean, completely different cultures, different like data maturity, um, different problems that you're trying to solve. So kind of like comparing both of those now, right? Like you mentioned that Fastly had used more modern tools like EL and DBT. Those weren't present at General Mills, right? Like you weren't doing or using any of those tools there. Right. Yeah. So it was really cool coming from a data engineering background where I was writing pipelines and like Spark and Scala for Hadoop. We hadn't really moved into to cloud yet. And so it was like all on-premise Hadoop, a lot of Hive queries, just really different technologies and calling APIs directly to ingest data, like a lot, like a heavy lift to get new data um, into our database. So then, yeah, moving to this more like modern data stack where Things are connectors and I'm like really what we're building out at Airbyte. Um, I have a huge appreciation for tools like that, having come from a role where 
I was the person developing and maintaining and upgrading and uh, troubleshooting all of those types of pipelines. For sure. And I mean, like coming from a more, I guess you could say, ground up perspective or like from scratch perspective of data engineering, how easy or how fast, I guess, did you kind of pick up on these new tools? And like, did you did it change your workflow? Did it change overall view of what data engineering was and is uh, when you were working at Fastly? Yeah, it was really interesting. So, you know, as far as like bringing in data from business systems. I mean, it just takes a couple of minutes to set up a new connector um, and get data flowing in. And that was something I'd never experienced before. That was really, really cool. So then when I wanted to start, you know, modeling a new data set to be used in a report downstream, most of my work focused on the data modeling and cleansing and joining things together. And I didn't have to bake in like another week of time to just get the data and even see what it looked like like that was that was already taken care of so it changed that process i mean it really shortened the amount of time that it took to get something done but i could see the data right away and focus more on how it all worked together and how we were going to use it downstream interesting to me after talking with alex about this is that they had a data engineering team still that she worked alongside even though they had an el tool to extract data but this made me wonder, why did they still have a data engineering team still? Well, it turns out that there was a gap that needed to be filled in terms of what the data engineering team was doing, how they were optimizing the data for the database they were working in, and what was needed for reporting. So then how did this workflow between a data engineer, an analytics engineer, and a data analyst look like then? At Fastly, it was, you know, I think the data engineering team was responsible for some core processes at Fastly from early on when they first got started. And then my team came in as sort of like the business intelligence group to kind of layer in system and, and other business data. So that's how those two teams work together. So you couldn't really get rid of one or the other or combine them completely. They had separate things that they were working on. But I think you'll see a lot of teams that at least what I've noticed at, at different companies just kind of in that transition phase right now of some data engineers, some analytics engineers, and trying to figure out like where the balance is. With the addition of this new role in data teams, we can then start to see companies adopt and change the responsibilities slash tasks that a data engineer might have. I then asked Alex what she feels the role is potentially shifting into. And I think from when I first started and was kind of just dabbling in like the Oracle world before moving into Hadoop and, you know, other cloud databases now. I think there's definitely been um, kind of a shift to more software engineering skills, which has been really great and just software engineering best practices. So I think a lot of people in data engineering come from that computer science software engineer background, but there was not enough tooling in place to really put those practices into play. And so you're seeing a lot more things like um, source control. Um, you're seeing, you know, a lot more like reusable code and modularized code and testable code, which is really, really hard to do with data. And so all of those things, I think, are shifting in the data engineer and analytic engineer role. And then you mentioned, I think your question was around how is that data engineer evolving? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think I think software engineer skills, I think like SpeakWall is still like King, I think you like that's still a really strong skill set that you're seeing across the board, whether it's data engineer, analytic engineer, analyst, they think really strong SQL skills are still really important. And then there's just different tools to kind of like put that SQL to, to run it against your data warehouse or your BI tool or, or things like that to centralize that code and make it reusable and more understandable and maintainable. And then I think data engineer is still necessary. Like I think, um, I don't think that role is going away with these tools. I think it's just evolved to kind of, you know, include more technology. I think things like I mentioned are getting like more like observable, more testable. Um, I think those are all like really great improvements and they're just expanding the skill set that a data engineer needs. Another responsibility that data engineers could have that I have personally heard from is setting up the actual data infrastructure itself with tools like Terraform and with the adoption and shift into data warehouses in the cloud with GCP and AWS. Yeah, I think it definitely depends on the company, but I have seen things trending a little bit more that direction where your data engineer team might also take on some of those infrastructure responsibilities uh, and focus more on especially things like Airflow where you're like orchestrating pipelines and, and everything like that. And then your analytics team is 
kind of picking up from there and use, you know, modeling and getting data ready to be consumed by more business facing users. Now, if you're watching this video and you're looking into becoming a data engineer, you may be wondering, what should I be learning if all these new tools are out? Should I be learning how to use them instead? Or should I be learning everything about data engineering and how they used to build pipelines from scratch? and how to maintain them? Good question. I think having come from a data engineering background and like building out pipelines, I really appreciate what all the tooling is doing for me. And so I think there's definitely benefit in still understanding why these tools are in place and what they're, what problems they're helping to solve and why it's um, so powerful to have a tool like Airbytes or DBT where you can have source control and you can just connect data um, in a matter of minutes instead of days or weeks that it used to take before. Um, so I think it's cool to have an appreciation for that. I don't necessarily think you need to start all the way back from traditional data engineering and work your way through to have that appreciation, but it's just good to understand more than just learning the tool, understanding what it's doing, why it's there, what problem it's solving why you might use it. And then, you know, like I mentioned before, I think SQL is still like really prevalent and and super important. Learning things about source control is really important, like software engineering best practices, uh, you know, reusable dry code, everything like that, I think is is really important. And that that's, I think, um, a lot of software engineers are actually a great fit for the data engineering world because we need all of those skills in place. You know, if you're someone who understands data and has an interest in technology, I think that's also a great place to come from because you understand data, you understand, you know, a lot of the hard parts about data are knowing like what it means and what it's used for and how it can be used um, to make decisions. If you come from that background and you have an interest in technology, and that's also a great person to work in a data engineering, analytics engineering space. The more you understand about data, the better of an engineer you'll be. Uh, so I think that's a really great skill set too. And then, yeah, with, with all these open source tools now, I think there are way more opportunities to learn about these tools without having to necessarily a job um, using them before. So I think that's a huge advantage as well. To wrap this all up and on the topic of the evolution of data engineering, the question spawns, what will data engineering look like in the foreseeable future? As new tools and frameworks come out, here were Alex's thoughts. That's a great question. I, <laughs> um, I think about the last five years and how many tools and how how different my day-to-day -day looks now in this modern data stack world versus, um, you know, just starting in Hadoop and Oracle early on. So um, it's very different. I won't try to make like bold predictions or anything like that, but I definitely, at least for currently, like for the next, you know, foreseeable future for myself, um, I'm looking at definitely there are more tools coming into this space. Data observability tools are really interesting. I think more like testing and data cataloging um, is going to be a bigger focus for me and my team, um, especially as we look to enable more self-service and more people in the company to be able to use data. You need to have it cataloged and it easy to find and understand what you're working with from a non-data engineer perspective. You know, we're looking at things with reverse ETL, I think still has, you know, a long way to go and like a lot of green space ahead on like what it can do. And I think um, that adds a lot more value to a data team to be able to then push those, um, you know, that cleanse data and data assets back into source systems. And so um, that's just really exciting. And yeah, I mean, there's new concepts every day. So I think I definitely see more tools coming into the space. Um, I don't see less tools at that point. Yeah, a lot of them are like interconnected. And mm -hmm. so I think there's just a lot of, you know, for example, once you've, you know, established your pipeline and you're ready to push data back into a source system or you're ready to add on a data catalog to enable self-service, I think we these tools are coming in to solve a problem. They're all just, yeah, really interesting. I think a lot of green space for, for tools right now. So I don't know about five years, but the next couple of years, um, I think we have plenty of things to keep us busy. And this concludes our thoughts on what we feel the data engineering role is shifting and evolving into. Do you potentially see this yourself? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. We'd love to hear what y'all think about it. Don't forget to subscribe for all things data related, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.